Hello and welcome to the Jan 2012 question 16 paper 1 walkthrough looking at a child going down a hill on a sled. Um, the first part of this question is trying to get us to draw a free body diagram of the child and the sled, uh, treating, the sled and the, treating the sled and the child as a single body object. Now when we draw free body diagrams we use arrows to represent the forces that said free body is feeling. So let's try and think about all the forces for this child and his and sled are feeling. Now, the first force I can think of when I think of sleds is the force of friction, the force that slows down the sled slowly, slowly, gradually over time. And that force could be said to act parallel with the plane, and in this case the plane is the hill. So let's draw in that arrow real quick. Now let's say, let's say this is about parallel? Yeah, this is about parallel. Now, when doing these types of questions, make sure that your force arrows are straight and also have arrowheads. As well as this, they need to be labelled. So let's label this one. Let's label this one R because. Now let's label this one F for friction. Why would we label it R, of course? That's, that's for a different. That's a completely different force. So, maybe, what's the next force that we can think of? Um, probably the one that is pulling him down the hill, and that's the force gravitational force, force of his own weight. Um, this child doesn't appear to be overly large, but who knows? We'll find out later, I'm sure. Um, now, the gravitational force always acts directly down, no matter what angle, no matter what hill. So let's draw that arrow straight down and label it. Uh, let's label it W for weight. However, you could label it MG, or you could even call it gravitational force. It really doesn't matter too much. Now, you've drawn two force arrows, so you might think, hey, that's two marks, let's move on to the next part. However, there is one more force that we need to consider, and that is the contact force, and that's the force between the sled and the ground, the hill and the sled. Um, and that acts perpendicular to the plane, that means at right angles, it's going straight in. So let's try and draw a perpendicular arrow. Let's say this is about perpendicular. Let's say that, yeah, so let's say it's at right angles to the friction force, and that's about a right angle there, and let's label this one up and get our two marks and get out of here. So let's label that the reaction contact force. Let's move on to the next part of this question. Now, the next part of this question, I'm still looking at the child in the sled, uh, talks about how a child in the sled are pulled across level ground by an adult. Um, they're pulled at 11 meters per second, Per second, well, they're pulled 11 meters from rest in 4.9 seconds. Show that the average acceleration is about 1 meters per second to the minus 2. Now, all the variables seem to be in this little part here. So let's highlight that little part. And hopefully, maybe in the exam, you've got a little highlighter. You take a pencil and just highlight all the key parts of information. Let's not do that because apparently <laughs> that obstructs all the data that we need. So. Let's try and fill in eyeball box. I definitely recommend trying or I definitely recommend writing out all the little equations for your C that all the little symbols that you need for your C that equations and trying to fill them in as you read through the question. So let's go. You're gonna have to excuse me terrible handwriting. I do not have one of those fancy tablets. Okay, so S stands for displacement, and here we can see that displacement is about eleven meters. Well, it is exactly eleven meters, so let's write eleven in right here not forgetting units. Um, U, so initial acceleration or initial velocity is zero because it's from rest. So let's draw a little zero meters per second. Let's try and make it pen a little smaller. Now it doesn't tell us his final speed so let's put a little question mark there because we don't know that. No, it doesn't look like we need to figure that out. Um, now I'm sure the average acceleration is 1 meters per second to minus 2. And that's the thing we need to find out. So let's, let's put a little question mark and a little star there to remind ourselves. So that's the thing we're trying to figure out. Now, we need to also show... Oh, we're also given the time. That's the last variable that we need. So, given the time, it's 4.9 seconds. Now, if we look, if we can sort the back of our, or the front of our equation, you see, we should be able to see there's only really one equation with all the variables that we have, and that is 
s equals ut plus half at squared. That's terrible too. So let's draw it back in. Now you can rearrange this without subbing in numbers. Um, I feel like it's better to sub in numbers first and then rearrange because especially when there's a half in here we can get rid of a half quite easily. Um, so let's sub in the numbers. So we have 11. Now u is 0. I mean now we, 2 is 4.9 but that doesn't really matter so we'll just write that in anyway. Let's put 0 dot times 4.9 plus one half a, which we don't know, so we'll just leave it as a, as a and then 4.9 squared. Again, I apologize for your absolutely abysmal handwriting. I'm sure your two-year-old cousin could do better. Um, <laughs> now, looking at this part, zero times anything is zero, so let's just rewrite this again. I'm sure the keen-eyed of you will have spotted that. So that leaves us with one half a 4.9 squared a. Um, now, I'm pretty sure those of you familiar with mathematics, taking a couple maths maths classes in your time, will be able to rearrange this. Um, for those of you who can't, let's do it together. Now, what we want to try and do is get rid of this half here. So, what we'll do is we'll times this side by two, and we'll times this side by two, and that leaves us with 22 is equal to a. Lots of four. 0.9 squared. That is a 2, I assure you. Now, we want, we just want a. So, what we, we're going to do now is we're going to divide both sides by 4.9 squared to get rid of this 4.9 and put it over here. So, that leaves us with 22 over 4.9 squared is equal to a, which is the variable we want. Now, if you tap that into your calculator, we should get a value for A, something along the lines of 0 0.916. Now, if we look back at the question, it's only a two mark question, so maybe you think you know, this is too long, or I've taken too long this question, but to get the right answer, this is unfortunately the path we're going to have to take. Now, again, if we look back at the question, we look at all the numbers we've been given, they're all to two significant figures. So this here just will not do. So let's rewrite this as 0.92. And this is our answer, not forgetting units. I'm not sure what happened there. Screen froze. Okay, now let's move on to the next question. Now, the next question talks about the child and the sled having a combined mass of 40 kilograms. Um, it wants us to find the average resultant force of the child and the sled. Now, initially this seems like a bit of a weird question, you might not know where to start, but again, don't forget, this is I-I, so we need to make sure we incorporate, we somehow incorporate the previous part of the question into the next part of the question. Now, I'm sure you all know the equation, uh, F equals MA, it's, pretty, it's a pretty standard equation, pretty easy to use. No squares, no halves, no nothing like that, just a simple times equation. Um, and so, hopefully now I've shown you this equation, you should be able to maybe think about what you're going to do next. So, and if that's not the case, let's walk through it now. Now, we want the average resultant force, and we know that F stands for force, so F equals M. Now, they've given us M, which is 40 kilograms, right here. And what's our A? Now we figured out A in the last question. I rounded it to 0 0.92. However, if you want to use your full calculator display, um, you can go ahead. I'm not going to, I'm just going to leave it as rounded as 0 0.92. And that should give us a value of force, which comes out to be about 37 newtons. And there it is, two marks, easy as anything, much easier than any of the previous questions.